I'm Jill the Jelly, and I have a whale of a tale to share with you. This story is part mystery, part suspense, and part science nonfiction, courtesy of some of my closest friends. Let's take a look. The famous school of surgeon were playing a game of go fish after class. Molly suddenly disrupted their concentration with a cry of excitement. She saw something in the distance that had gone unnoticed to the school in the past. Molly led the school of surgeon on a deep sea dive toward the unidentifiable object. Upon getting close enough to see through the murky water, they found treasure chests filled with coins, pearls, sparkling gems, and precious jewelry. They were so excited they instantly began sharing their own intentions as to how their portion of this newly dis discovered treasure would be spent. Bob the Blowfish spoke up and shared his uncertainty as to whether his friends had struck off then at gold. He couldn't fathom how a treasure chest filled with such an abundance of legitimate valuables would go unclaimed. To the excitement and commotion, a curious crowd began accumulating around the class of surgeons. Fortunately for them, their newly graduated friends had arrived on scene. These knowledge-filled graduates were willing to help solve the mystery. With hopes of gaining claim to a share of the treasure, and after some deliberation, the graduates agreed that determining the density of a coin and then comparing it to values of common metals could determine the authenticity and identity of the coins. Density equals mass divided by volume. In order to calculate the density, they had to determine the scientific instruments needed to find both the mass and the volume. Gabrielle the Guppy urgently pressed the team of scholars to get started solving the mystery. She interrupted the chaos by explaining that finding the density of an object is easy. Just use the formula. Colin the Clownfish insisted on helping and volunteered to measure the mass. He correctly decided to use the triple beam balance. Further explaining his reasoning, Colin shared his knowledge by informing his friends that making use of the balance will find the mass of a coin. This is the numerator necessary for completing the calculation to determine density. More friends were now getting intrigued and involved. The trio of tuna wanted in on a share of the riches and therefore insisted on finding the volume of a coin. To find the volume of an object shaped like a cube, finding the volume is rather easy. Simply measure the length, width, and volume of each side with a ruler. Then multiply, and you get the answer. However, keep in mind the object under scrutiny is a coin. It's not in the shape of a cube. This structure is referred to as being irregularly shaped. In other words, the volume should be measured a process called water displacement. This procedure requires finding the difference between an amount of water before the object is added and measuring the amount of water again after the object is added. This will effectively provide the denominator needed for calculating the density. Let's take a closer look. First measure and record the initial volume of water. Then place the object in the water and record the new volume, also known as the final volume. Colorful Kale added his detailed knowledge that by subtracting the two measurements, the volume of the irregularly shaped object is revealed through the process of water displacement. With the aid of another buddy, the school of surgeon agreed on dividing the determined measurement. Mass would be used as a numerator, and it would be divided by the volume that is found through using water displacement. Lastly, and the most suspenseful step, 
is comparing the calculated density to a list of predetermined densities of common metals as you see here. So what do you think? Did these fish find authentic gold coins? Let's assume the mass of the irregularly shaped coin is determined to be 22.6 grams and the volume is determined to be 2 milliliters through the process of water displacement. After dividing the mass by the volume, we get 11.3. This number is the density of a coin. Comparing the density to our list of common metals, we see that, that sadly, the coins are composed of lead, not of gold. I guess this could be why the treasure chest had gone unidentified. Even though it's disappointing, we did learn how to find the density of an irregularly shaped object through using the process of water displacement.